How many of y'all want to get married in this house? Come on, how many of y'all want to get married? Come on, come on. How many of you uh, are married? And you look... Baby, after we get married, if you don't do that... Baby, like, like, as soon as I say... Uh, what, 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 what? He's, he's surprising me every day, man. How many of you are married? How many feel like you're killing it? How many is just a good Sunday? <laughs> Last Sunday, y'all were like coming to church, fighting and screaming. And then all of a sudden, you walk in the door and our, y'all, we are the sweetest church on the planet, are we not? Is our church not almost, almost violating? We are so happy in this church. And, and when y'all walk in the church, you would holler at each other all the way to church. I, I don't know why the devil makes your kids act like the devil on the way to church. You know what I'm saying? Or y'all start fighting, and then all of a sudden you get in church, and then you walk in the dream team and say, how you doing, sister? Blessed and highly favored. You are lying and going to hell. <laughs> and then you get in here, and we're singing, Jaira, you are enough. I'm not cooking for him all week long. He's going to fend for himself. If he dresses the lily with beauty and splendor, how much more? Oh, no, he ain't going to do that for me. Uh -uh, that means I got to swallow my pride. Sometimes when you are very disgruntled, how many feel like you go through seasons where you're up and down? Come on, what happens in this church stays in this church. The reason I make y'all hold your hand up is because when you, when you hold your hand up, you're basically telling the devil, ha, 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 I'm coming out. You're not hiding it anymore. And you don't understand that for some of you that are in marriages in this room and it's just very just up and down when you are in our service and you're admitting some things, right? It's letting your spouse know, oh, okay. Because when you're married, sometimes you get to a place where you're resentful. You almost get resentful. And it's really your fault. Whichever one's resentful, it really is your fault. Well, I'm leaving right now. It is. Because the enemy causes us to get defensive. The enemy causes us to get resentful. We lie and say things on Valentine's Day. I don't want nothing. <laughs> Husbands, if she says that she doesn't want nothing, please go get her a lot. <laughs> right, right. Dog, the bounty hunter's like, don't y'all make me come to y'all's house. <laughs> y'all listen to me. Listen to me, y'all. Don't listen. Follow your heart. And you do unto others as you wish they would do unto you. Right? So, 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 if he's crotchety one day, you got to pour the love on him. If she's crotchety one day, you got to pour the love because love is not something that you hang out in all the time. You're going to have mood swings. The greatest thing that we, that me and Lo, when we started dating at the very beginning, he sat me down one day and he said, I need to know everything. I was like, oh Jesus, because I can put stuff in my book, but I don't want to talk about it because then when I talk about it, it's different. But when I put it in my book, most people ain't going to read it. Cause y'all know y'all don't read. Okay. And so I had to sit there and for the first time, this man that I'm sitting in front of is the first man that's ever said, I need to know everything. And immediately I said, can you give me 24 hours? <laughs> because I knew that he wanted to know everything because he wanted a future with me. And he didn't want to be caught off guard. And we didn't want to walk into this marriage hiding stuff from each other. We did that in my last marriages. And so if you're at a place right now where you're single again or you're married and almost single again, you're still at a place where God can turn it around. When you start realizing the enemy is not after your spouse that's watching porn. You standing outside that door. Why are you looking at that poor? She's prettier than me. No, he, that, 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 that has nothing to do with it. It's a spirit. And the enemy is trying to break you up by your mouth and his addiction. And so what we've basically done is we have sold our soul over here to this sinful way instead of dying to our flesh every day, instead of getting to the root of whatever is going on inside of us. Because what happens, y'all, is it trickles. It's almost like when you get divorced, you're like, man, I'm about to come out here. You even have a divorce party. <laughs> 
that about two weeks in, you're like, oh, wow, what have I done? Because the enemy always lures things as a lot more glorified than they are. And before you know it, it sucked you in. That addiction has sucked you in. You're going back to things that God saved you from and delivered you from because somewhere inside of you, you feel like a failure and you feel ashamed. And before you know it, you're going down a circle of rabbit chasing. Just that's not how God works. And if you read your word, he uses people with the worst past to create the best futures. Here's what you got to do. You got to stop hiding whatever you did. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, stop hiding whatever you did. You're like, I will never tell anybody. This is going to my grave with me. As soon as I know that I've done something, yo, my whole life after I really got, I didn't really hear from God till I was like 37. My daddy was a preacher, but I was so hard headed. I was allowing myself to carry religion in my spirit in such a way that I thought I had to be all the way saved and not before I could pray. And what I didn't understand was the more I got on my knees and began to pray, the more my heart was beginning to change. So it wasn't waiting until I get it all together to begin to pray. It was understanding that in the middle of praying and spending time with God, God was doing something to my heart. He was changing me, not them. Because that's not my job. My job is not to change you. My job is to watch patterns of myself. Right? So we're gonna, I'm going to title this, say, love does not dishonor. Say it again. He says, love does not dishonor. You're going, love does not. Y'all got to get it in your spirit. Just let it mess, just, just let it seep. Words are killers. What are the patterns in your life? When I was allowing God to begin to heal me and I was like, God, I, I, I lost everything. Because sometimes God will let you hit rock bottom to find out who the rock is at the bottom. Like, yo, I told my baby daddy, my son's father, that I was in love with, addicted to him. After 18 years of marriage, sin took us further than we wanted to go, cost us more than we want to pay, and our marriage ended, and I wished to God that I could go back and fix it, but my words had already ruined everything. And I'm laying in my bed one day. I was like, God, heal my marriage. He's like, it's not going to happen. It's not happening. For 18 years, you've told this man, I don't need no man. And you woke up one day and ain't got one. Because the walls that you built to protect your heart now has you single and angry. And this is not the way I created you to live, Kim. Did I get it together right away? Yo, I had a mouth. Does that shock y'all? <laughs> Do y'all think I got a mouth? Now I'm gentle as a butterfly. Because God healed me. Because I began to pay attention. Yo, I found myself staying in cycles because I felt like in my head, I done so much wrong, there's no fixing it. Might as well just go on all, just go all the way out, just slip and slide to hell. Because I've done so much wrong, God can never forgive me. And even if God forgives me, all his people ain't. Because <laughs> people don't let you forget nothing, right? But my problem was I kept putting my faith in humans. And so I would hear the words of the people that didn't validate me. I would hear the words of, ain't nobody ever going to like you. Ain't nobody going to ever love you. You're too much. Anybody ever heard that? Come on, lift your hand up. How many of y'all hear? You're too, too, too much. It's all women. <laughs> if he dresses a lily. <laughs> it's always women. But here's why. Because of the garden. Because of Eve. Apples are not even good without peanut butter. <laughs> and now we're going through life. One day, your husband has had the same twerk for 12 years. You loved his twerk. You loved his little innuendos. All of a sudden, you start going through menopause. He's sleeping beside you. And you're envisioning a pillow. Going across his face. Thank you, Eve. Every 28 days, well, he knows. 
He knows that stay out of my way every 28 days. Yo, God created you to be a woman. You literally can birth a whole human out of a place that they should come out of. Because you're a boss. But yet you can't get your mouth and your mind and your emotions under control. Just going all over the place. Why? Because God knows we women are life givers. When we really get healed, yo, it's so attractive for even a half a female. Whoo, whoo. That man walk in your house. Huh? You're like, huh? He like, I want some, I need, I need some brownies at midnight. You're like, what you want in them? Walnuts? You want raisins? What you want? When you're healed, God created you too much. But he also created you to be the wind in someone's sail, the president of their fan club, and not their escape, but their duty. Can you imagine being married and y'all don't even sleep together? I would say how many of y'all sleep together, but I ain't gonna say that. I'm not even gonna, I don't need to know. I'm just praying I change you so that y'all are chasing each other around the house. Hello? Is it me you're looking for? Put Johnny in the bed. That you're so healed that everywhere you go, you are contagious of God's glory. That you could have five marriages like the woman at the well. You could have been a player. You could have gotten so many women pregnant, sir, that you lost count. And now you're like, well, I'm gonna be paying child support till I die. What the heck? That is not the way God created you. God created you to face every storm, to face every decision, to face everything that you're walking through and say, devil, I've let you punk me enough. I've let you punk me in my mind. I've let you punk me in my heart. I've let you punk me with my mouth, but I'm about to get ownership of this thing. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Devil, I'm back. I don't know about y'all. Maybe it's because I'm just about to get married. I ain't married yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe, just maybe, I'm like, butterflies. Whatever you say is right. <laughs> but I know it ain't going to always be that way. So I got to have my heart right so I don't take offense and cause the enemy to let division in my house. I know order. Why? Because I've gotten in the last five years. I started learning how to cook. I went on Pinterest. They would say a dash. What the heck is a dash? I would just. Y'all know me, I'm so extra. And then I have to record everything. Cause I know that if I haven't been cooking, a lot of y'all ain't been cooking. <laughs> Oh, we're going to cook together. Get a dash. They're like, what's a dash? I'm like, just get the Holy Ghost. Just let the Holy Ghost tell you what a dash is. <laughs> then I taste it. I'd be like, dog, that's nasty. <laughs> then I started getting Hello Fresh. I was like, they're going to send me all my ingredients and they're going to tell me what a dash is. They're going to send me a measuring cup. I messed up Hello Fresh. <laughs> and then I started like, I lay hands on myself because I am her. God, you know my man going to come. And he gonna want me to cook. And I can't be practicing on him. I gotta know when he comes into the picture. So that I know how to cook, cause I want him to know that I can be a boss chick and hit. When I walk up in this house, it's gonna be like, all of me loves all of you. I'm gonna be a wife. And so when you get to a place where you look at being someone's spouse as an honor, it's an honor to be able to have a spend the night party with somebody every night. It's like eating your favorite food every day. You ever heard those people that are always telling you those French fries at McDonald's are unhealthy? Well, so is that relationship you're in. You keep going and taking the trash out. You wasted all these years trying to get somebody that ain't your spouse. Well, how you know they ain't my spouse? Cause you've been with them for 14 years and y'all still ain't married. You ain't gonna be able to smile for your pictures, your wedding pictures, cause you ain't gonna have no teeth left. Cause y'all waited. 
Well, I spent so much time with them. I can't leave now because what if they get it together tomorrow? They have it yet. Right? Y'all know I'm telling the truth because I've done it too. I only preach stuff in this house that I've done gone through. Let me get to the scripture. The first thing I want you to write down is, is your mood your master? Is your mood your master? Are your feelings dictating whether you do what God tells you to do or not? I know a lot of y'all and your feelings are not into healing because when something doesn't go right, you quit coming to church. I see y'all on social media though. But now you're slipping the cuss words. I know y'all hide me. I ain't stupid. I don't want you to see what I really do. It ain't me you got to worry about. It's Jesus. I'm just trying to help you get it right so that you can live leave a little loca. What's that word? Leave a little loca? Yeah, whatever. Is your mood your master? Is your feelings dictating whether you do what God is telling you to do or not? Listen to this. My joy, say my joy, my joy. is my job. Is my job. <laughs> you just said it. You just admitted it. My joy, say my joy, my is my job. Listen, no matter what happens, when I get to my job, no matter how the enemy is trying to steal my joy because of that bad doctor's report, my joy is my job because it's not under anyone else's jurisdiction. You got to mind your, you got to manage your mind. Yo, I'm telling you something. I was crazy. And now I'm great. Ain't I great, baby? You better say I'm great. I know I'm great. I know I'm great. I put a lot of work in. Yo, when you don't mind your emotions, resentment sets in. Then hatred, hatred stirs up conflict. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred. Stirs up conflict. But what? I need y'all to read it out loud, saints. Come on, saints, say it again. Say it again. There's two commandments in the Bible that you got to do, boo. One is to love your neighbor as yourself. But I know that's hard. I know it. I know it's hard. I would die if I flipped this out because it's really heavy. You got the grab the gavel. Gravel. You got the gavel. And it's your way or no way. What I say goes. Fix me. Do what I want. It's all about me. Deal with it. I'll never love again. Word curse. Word contract. My son's just like his lazy daddy. Word curse. I'll never, ever be loved again. Word curse. Man, I want her husband. He got, he got six abs. Mine got one. Her husband looks like he stepped out of GQ. Mine looks like he stepped out of DQ. <laughs> Word curse. The enemy comes to what? Our church is a word church. Boom, boom. Yo, yo. yo the, the reason I got y'all knowing the word is every time the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Every time the enemy is roaming to and fro, trying to steal the peace in your house, trying to get your kids to stir up junk in between you and your spouse, you will begin to know, I shall live and not die. Greater is he. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Walking through your house like a madman. Walking through your house like a mad woman. Lay hands on yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Get your hair oil. Get your peppermint oil. Get some oil. Lay hands on it. And then go lay hands on everything in that house. Stop using your mouth. 
Stop it. When I was about to turn 50 years old, one day I'm laying in my bed because turning a new decade. <laughs> and I know y'all, y'all all know I'm black. <laughs> but I crack. This white melts, y'all. So I found myself having a little pity party at about 50. I was looking and seeing all the little stuff happening. Like white people, we start sagging right here. Y'all know, y'all know. All the white ones are laughing with me, girl, I know. We get these little things on our arms right here. The only thing that it's good for is if you get an American flag tattooed on it. You can sh wave it on July the 4th. And I was like, God, God. Y'all know I ain't got it no more because I've been in the gym. <laughs> I was like, I don't like it, so I'm going to fix it. I would get out on the trails. I'd be running saying, Kimberly, why'd you let yourself get this fat? Your knees are even shaking. I would be just running. Good Lord, I can't wear those heels because my fat falls and I got fat pump. I'm just going around. The Finally, I heard the Lord say, stop it. Stop it, Teddy. <laughs> James, Derek. I had to start putting my aggression on my situation, on knowing that the enemy did not want me to come my best. He wanted me to think about how long, oh my God, when you're 50 pounds over, you're like, well, it's gonna take me forever. Cause you know, now I'm 50. My metabolism is in Punta Canta on vacation. It's dead now. So I'm just gonna be fat for the rest of my life. And you will keep eating them ho-hos and scratching your behind. You hear me? But the Bible says that when you begin to renew your mind, it says when you begin to wake up every morning and when those foul thoughts come into your mind, you immediately reject them out. How do you renew your mind? Every single time the enemy goes, oh, you're about to die. You're over here going, Pastor Kim, pray for me. I'm dying right now. No, you're having an anxiety attack. Because you don't know how to renew your mind because you are afraid that where you are right now is where you're going to stay. And you don't realize that God is the kind of God that within 24 hours can shift the whole narrative of your life. The minute that you surrender everything, you don't got to be addicted to drugs. You ain't got to stay in that toxic relationship. You ain't got to stay in kindergarten. When God can propel you to from the penthouse. What you saying to yourself? Listen to this. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers all wrongs. Proverbs 10 and 12. We want others to be responsible for our state of mind. But here's your announcement. Your joy is your job. It's your job. Do you know what you got to do? The Bible says, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Proverbs 3. Guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. Now that ain't being like, I'm blocking everybody. You go on your social media pages. I am doing a Facebook purge. If you don't see me in your newsfeed, you've been deleted. Because we're talking, Kim said I could just purge. That is a wrong heart. You are the drama. It's getting into a place where you say, man, thieves don't rob empty vaults. The devil's been fighting me because he wanted to get to my kids. The devil's been fighting me because he didn't want me to find low. The devil's been fighting me because he wanted me to be alone. At 50 years old, when I was turning uh, into a whole new decade, I was laying in my bed one night and I was like, I've got all the houses, I've got all the cars. I've written all the books. I got the greatest of everything. But the only thing I ain't got is a man. You accomplish everything in your life, sir, ma'am. But all those things don't keep you warm. They don't keep you warm. You got to break the cycle for your family. I was watching the King celebration yesterday. What an incredible family. But none of them had any kids. One kid, 
by the middle son. But none of the others did. Beautiful families. What happened? What generational curse should have been broken? To carry on legacies. What is in your family right now that you are denying and you are just blanketing and you're, you're out here living, lying to yourself? When God is over here saying, you might have been the black sheep, but I'm turning you into the goat. I trusted you with that divorce. I trusted you with that crazy family. You thought because the curtain had closed, the production was over, but God said, I had to close the curtain in order to set up for this next scene. I had to let you walk through those divorces because when you walked through those divorces, you kept hitting rock bottom. And the only time that you would find God is when you would hit rock bottom. And one day you got it. Maybe you were a late bloomer like me. God said, guard your heart, not hire your mother to guard your heart. Then y'all jump from your mother to a therapist. Then you change therapists because they ain't doing what you want them to do. You keep changing jobs. You've had like three or four jobs in the last year. And it's always everybody else's fault. This was me. And I never thought because of the history that I had that God could do what he's doing in my life today. Because he's waiting on you. Come on, somebody. He's waiting on you to get up. Get out of your comfort zone. Start doing some things. Serving at the church. Getting involved in singles. Y'all know people want to get involved in singles because, oh, I don't want to say that I'm single. You are so special to God that he's taking more time to get your spouse ready. Y'all, sometimes God isn't answering your prayer because you ain't ready for what you're praying for. This is me. Take it or leave it. We're all leaving it. And we're living our life over here alone and sad. If your responsibility, it's your responsibility to deal with the bitterness other people tried to plant. That stinks. Especially when you want a, 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 an apology that you may never get. It's so hard to let go of the baggage of what your daddy and mama did because they raised you. It is so hard, especially with social media. We stop people that don't want us. Why are you still going on their page? Yeah. Well, they happy and they done moved on. Yeah. And I'm over here just healing. You are so smart. And a lot of times the reason we stay stuck is because we're expecting ourselves from other people. You can't expect yourself from other people. Listen, listen to what 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5 says. You ready for this? A lot of y'all don't like this scripture because it's hard. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Wait, wait. Hey, what's the next line? Ha, ha, ha. I ain't bringing it up. You ain't making me angry. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to still fix you breakfast in the morning. I'm still going to wrap my arms around you. I'm still going to pat your behind. This is not for the singles. If you're single, you're saying, I shall get better every day of my life. Every day of my life, I am in a caterpillar position right now. God is getting me to a place where I'm going to be a butterfly. And when I come into the stands, I'm going to be so moved and used of God because of the things that I made it through that should have killed me. Listen, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered and it keeps a record of no wrongs. This is the word of God. And if you're doing these things, that's why your prayers aren't being answered. 
You're praying for all of these things and God ain't doing it because he's saying, I can't do nothing with you. You've got all this anger. You're holding on to all this unforgiveness and you're over here saying, I ain't forgiven because if I forgive, then it's like pardoning a crime committed against me. It ain't fair what they did. It ain't fair that they walked out of your life. It ain't fair that they cheated on you. It ain't fair they left their kids. But when you see what God is about to bring in your life, you're going to be like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for unanswered prayers. Thank you, God, that when I wanted to give up, I got up. Listen, most of us do not realize the effect of what we say unintentionally sometimes. Proverbs 12 and 8 says this, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Say this. Say, I'm owning my stuff. Own your stuff. When I was getting ready for this sermon, I was putting all these things in my notes. Because y'all know I'm ADHD with a lot of H. So I got something to keep me on track. Now, if I got up here and preached and it stunk, I ain't going to throw my computer away. Because I put those notes in. So when your life isn't going right, they could have caused you to get depressed. But you're, you're the one focusing on the wrong things and keeping yourself depressed. Because my Bible says in Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things. That means whatever I'm staring at, I got this. So you got to take inventory today of the things that you're letting in your spirit. How many deal with fear? How many deal with fear? You know, fear is false evidence appearing real. You know, fear comes on us from having the wrong people in our life talking negative and derogatory to us, and it causes us to fear. It's those people that their voices should not be any magnification at all in your life, even if it's your daughter. The whole world is celebrating you, but you don't see it. You only hear the negative, and especially now with social media. There will be people coming out from 1980 talking about you because they don't like that you're blessed. They would try to talk you out of your marriage, girl. I would, I would, I would dump him because they ain't married. You're over here taking constructive criticism from people that ain't constructed nothing. You got to get yourself in some rooms. You got to get yourself. You want to be married? You get you some healthy married women in your life. You watch how they treat their husbands. Sir, you get you some healthy men in your life that will help you. That it's like, we got men's. Don't we have men's today? We got a men's outing right here. Take your wife by Wendy's with your kids and come back. Get you some men in your life that are struggling with the same thing you are. You got a, you got a lot to carry, sir. You ain't got nobody to talk to because boys don't cry. You got to get you some people around you. They say, dude, I'm praying for you. That you can text every so often and say, I'm driving around my cul-de-sac because right now I do not want to walk in my house. I'd rather stick needles in my eyeballs than walk in and look at her face today. And you get you some men in your life that pray with you and say, say, listen, you're on the cusp of a breakthrough. You and your family are on the cusp of the biggest breakthrough of your life. And you are the man of that house. You are the lion of that house. You are the man of God that when you walk into a room and you start speaking over that wife, put your arms around that wife, love on her, pray for her. And if you don't want to pray, at least wrap your arms around her and say, baby, you so fine. What, what's your name? You hear me? You gotta watch your words. Listen to this, I gotta hurry. Toxic talk, what is it? Who does it and why do they do it? Now I'm not trying to condemn any of y'all because some of y'all gonna be like, ooh, ooh, I did that yesterday. <laughs> Listen, toxic talks is words that sting, that hurt, words that crush the spirit. Words that leave people feeling hurt and hopeless. Toxic talk. I hear it all the time. I don't even go to reunions anymore because that loud mouth chunky butt aunt of mine always makes me feel bad. 
you are the very one that needs to get healed so that when you walk into that reunion that your love covers a multitude and you begin to heal because hurt people hurt people but heal people heal people y'all toxic words you cannot make that man you got to choose between your mama or me you knew he was a mama's boy and it's actually kind of like a good thing because the way he treats his mama is the way he gonna treat you so we're not bleeding on people that didn't cut us we're healing even though the wound may not be our fault we're healing so that we can go through life want to put a thousand to flight to put ten thousand to flight amen so toxic words toxic talks is words that sting and hurt words that crush the spirit Words that leave people feeling hurt and hopeless. What's coming out of your mouth? Who does it? Who, who, who does toxic? Anybody? Everybody? Parents? Husbands? Wives? Relatives? Employees? Friends? Christians? Adults? Children? Why? Because we're human. But it's learning how to spend time with God. I lay hands on myself every day and I say, Lord, make sure that what comes out of my mouth is of you. There's times that I got to say, I'm sorry. I would rather go to hell. <laughs> and the Lord's like, say you're sorry. I'm like, put some Crisco on the slide. Because here I come. But I know that my next blessing is connected to being free from offense. Ah. Every time I post on social media, I used to walk around and say, bye Felicia. Y'all remember that? When I had my mohawk. I was preaching all over the world and still had some stuff that needed to heal. Bye, Felicia. Till I had a Felicia come up to me after church. <laughs> well, you know, PK, I've been rejected my whole life. And tonight I came for a word. I want to go to another level. And when you said, bye, Felicia, it was like God was throwing me away. Wow. Wow. Y'all. I wrapped my arms around her so tight. And I said, I'm so sorry. And let me stand proxy for every single one of you in this room today. For that preacher that broke your heart. For that spouse that broke your heart. For that daddy that walked out on you. For that mama that wasn't there for you. Let me stand in the gap today and say, I'm sorry. Because sometimes we need an apology that we'll never get. And in order for us to go to another level, we got to take all the stuff that's stewing inside of us. Sometimes it's that kid. But we all do it. Who gets hurt when we do it? Children? By parents? Friends? By each other? Husbands? by their wives and wives by their husbands. Usually we don't mean to hurt people. The words just pop out without planning. We forget them, but the people never forget them. If you're in this room and you're like, man, I've been mean. So have I. messed up a lot of relationships because I was so afraid if I let my walls down they were going to hurt me like somebody in my family that hurt me some of y'all have never experienced the agape love ever in a relationship you never saw the example from your family you never 
saw the example from your pastor, your leaders. You never saw transparency. God is saying to you today, I'm starting with you. You gotta let it go. You gotta lay hands on yourself every day. I have literally gotten out of my bed and I've literally gone back to bed and I've thrown the covers over me and I've laid in the bed and said, oh my God, heal me because I want to be so nasty today. Because of circumstances. Because I'm a woman. But I got out of my feelings and got into healing. And you listen to me. Toxic talk doesn't lead to help. It destroys. What does toxic talk look like? In Proverbs 15, 1, it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. This is the first time in my relationship that I honor and respect a man. Isn't that sad? Because I was so used to abandonment that I wouldn't allow myself to be loved like Christ. Because somewhere in me, I didn't think I deserved it. But I know God let me walk this journey so that everybody connected to me can see if God did it for Kim, God can do it for me. I got to surrender. There's more people like me than like those flawless people that say they ain't never done nothing wrong that are literally making oat cereal every morning for their spouse. There's more people like me than that. And he's saying to you today, give me your heart. Here's what you got to be free from. You ready for this? Name calling. Name calling. You got to eliminate these things from your mouth. Stop putting your, your husband don't need a mama. He's got one. Your wife don't need to be, she don't need a daddy. She's a protector. But each one of us can't do what God's called us to do is we're, if we're struggling with unforgiveness and pain and bleeding on people that didn't cut us. Well, I never had the example. That's been your excuse forever. You got so many people in this church that are great examples of how to be a good man and a good woman. And it ain't never too late to change. Name calling. Other words are more subtle but still hurtful like stupid, idiot, worthless. Name calling focuses on the character of the individual rather than on the particular problem at hand. For example, you are a liar instead of you lied and it hurt my feelings. It's the delivery. Words that wear on our soul. Words are just ugly and negative like shut up. Swear words. Y'all calling each other. I want to say it, but I won't be on shade room. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. Stop it. Instead, wrap your arms around each other. How many would do that when you're fighting? The single ones. The married one. Well, we got a married. He does our marriage counseling. All of you probably need to get into marriage counseling. <laughs> the one thing he's taught me, this couple, is how to fight fair. You're gonna fight. But don't ever let the enemy make you feel like you're better than your spouse. I make seven figures and he, he makes 60. Why y'all both need seven figures? So you're missing out on somebody really being able to protect you because you're letting society tell you you shouldn't be with this person because he don't make as much as you. You know what I discovered? Now my baby's a boss. And I'm thankful that I was healed in such a manner that I didn't expect him to be a preacher. Because society's telling me he needs to be a preacher because you're a preacher. Instead of a businessman. But I already done that. I already been there. So for the first time in my life, I'm at a place where I'm like, God, you do whatever you want to do in my life. And just don't let me miss it. And don't let me ever again use words that are going to take away dignity. And sometimes it's you. 
It's your own heart that needs to be healed. Because what I have found that is when you're really healed, you don't say stuff that hurts other people. People will get you and literally cause all kinds of lies about you and they're putting you all over social media and you just living like what? Because you're healed. When you're healed, you don't clap back. When you're healed, you don't win the fight. When you're healed, you don't care who wins. When you're healed, you just do what Christ would do. When he got up on that cross between two thieves and he stretched his arms out wide and said, for you it is finished. He even said, God forgive them for they knoweth not what they do. Stand up on your feet. You cannot let your words take the heart out of someone. And if you're in this room today, and y'all are strained. I prayed for four years for God to bring couples in this church. I wanted couples. I wanted strong husbands and wives that chased each other around their house. And I pray for y'all all the time that God would protect your marriages. That any time anybody sees a marriage, they're like, you go to Real Talk Kills Church, don't you? Y'all crazy in love up in there. That you're millionaires. That you're breaking the generational broke curse off of you. That you're breaking that, that mind game that would cause you to stay stuck off of you for generations to come. That this would be a church where you're your CEOs of your own companies, where you're great leaders of your houses, where y'all work together like a team. I got my singles. I'm yelling at them every day. Get up. Praise your way through. Stay focused. You know that man ain't for you. You know that woman ain't for you. Y'all are unequally yoked. Because I know that God don't play about all of y'all. And so you cannot let the enemy come and steal, kill, and destroy. In this house, you will never be devil food. He's roaming to and fro. That means he's looking for food. You. He's not going to eat you by the tools you give him from your own life. I need everybody in this room to lift up your hands. Y'all get anything out of today? Listen. Listen, I want to say this really quickly. Another word to stop using is disappointing. You disappointed me. That denotes failure and rejection. Stop saying that. Stop looking at your spouse and you just like your mama. You just like your dad. Stop. Even if you think they are. Start praying over yourself every day. I said, God, heal me. It's never too late. I watched Mimi, because she back out in this dating world. And I keep telling Mimi, Mimi, you gotta be nice. I ain't gotta be. And I heard the Lord say, tell you, leave your mama alone. Because when she finds the right one, because the right one makes you, ugh. Honey, it pushes you to break through and not break downs. And just because my, my mama, just because my daddy died three years ago and they were married 52 years, my mama gonna get to be loved twice, right? Different. Listen to this. Another word that you gotta quit. When you're upset, it's easy to exaggerate. Stop saying words like never. You're never on time. You're never, there, there's what, there, that ain't fixing nothing. Stop saying things like always, you always, well they do. That's not changing them. You're always late. Y'all listen to me, husbands listen to me. And wives. Valentine's Day is Wednesday. If she told you, I don't need nothing. Don't even worry about it, I'm good. Don't listen. 
You go buy her a lot at Wally World. Go to Tarjay. Victoria's Secret. You married? The single girl, Victoria's Secret. That's right, baby. We get you ready, man. We get you ready. Listen to this. Never talk about their weight, their appearance, and never talk about their intelligence. They gain some weight. Say, baby, let's go chase each other around the block. <laughs> and whoever gets home first. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what he does to me. <laughs> He'd be like, you eating that? We're going to the gym today. You know that, right? Because you've got to take care of yourself. You can't let yourself go. You can't. It makes people angry when you let yourself go. You got to be a man. My, you want them to be proud when you walk into a room. You hear me? And so get into a position where you learn how to say things positively. You want him to take the trash out? Slamming that cabinet ain't doing nothing. One thing I have learned about marrying an alpha, a alpha male, alpha female, alpha male, you don't tell them nothing. You got to do everything in love. You want him to take that trash out? Stop slamming those cabinets every Tuesday. Oh, he gonna know. This Tuesday when that trash needs to be taken out. Turn you on some Sade. All throughout our Luther Vandross, our Mariah Carey. And they say, baby, you are the sexiest trash can take her outer I've ever seen in my life that man gonna be taking that trash out sir you want her to do better start building her up you hear me when she walks in that room and she's lost 10 pounds you be like hubba hubba who's your daddy words matter everybody lift up your hands like this we're going to all get saved again. Y'all ready for this? Say, Father, forgive me for thinking that I was so big that I would, could mess up the calling on my life. Because you knew before I was ever even a thought in my mother's womb that I was going to be here. And this year, you got plans to bless me and not harm me. You, you got exceedingly abundantly ready for me. So get myself into alignment. And Lord, I give you permission to blow my mind. I give you permission to bring me so much joy that I am a testament of your glory. Lord, I repent of all my sins and I ask you to live in my heart make my heart your home forever and ever amen amen y'all you just getting started man